Welcome back Bitwigglers! It's been quite some time since the last tutorials and it happened quite a lot of stuff in the last time so we have now the release of 1.3 and with already with 1.2 there came a lot of new features into Bitwig specifically uh, the groups and the new browser. The scripts are now also adapted to support these new features and starting up with the beat step controller which is really powerful by now I could find out that you actually can program the shift button to use with the, with the beat step so this gives a big advantage um, over the, the first version of the script so in the first version of the script you had to use the big button to change the modes which you can now use for scrolling into your project which is pretty handy and you can now use the shift button to change the modes. So if you press the shift button you will see there's a lot of buttons lighting up there. I'm not sure if you can see the colors but I tried to do some kind, some little bit of, of color coding here. So the modes are up there in the first row. Those six buttons change the modes. And the color coding says that the first two is drag management and device editing. These three buttons, uh, which are the same color, are for playing and sequencing. And the last one is the session. So clicking here, we go to session. First one is track, navigation. Second one is device. Next one, play. And play has a specific function. If you press it twice, it toggles between uh, editing of macros and editing of tracks. So you can either edit, edit, play and edit your track or play and uh, modify a device. So pretty handy. Next one is a drum sequencer and the drum playing. And last one is a, is a sequencer. So these are the modes and you might wonder what the other buttons are for. So what I did, I removed the play and the record button from the first track view, which has the advantage that you, in all of the modes, you can simply press shift and have your play and record button ready. So first one is play, so we play, and if you press the second one, you're starting to record. And we can stop it again. There are these two buttons left. This one is pretty simple, so if you have loaded a VST instrument, Let's put in my trustworthy synth one, and you can now use uh, this button to close and open its window. And last but not least, let's go to the policy in here. This button opens the browser, so the browser is one new feature since one or two. And you need to make sure that you have a device selected, otherwise the browser will not open. And what I did with the browser is, um, you see they have several columns in your browser. And I assigned one of these second row knobs to one column. And the last one is the patch selection. So, button number 9, first one changes your favorites. Second one, the preset location. Next one, all devices. The next one is your type of your patch. And next one is here, the creator. And next one is a tag you want to select. And so this button has no function and this one selects the actual preset. What are these buttons for here? So now you have a selection, you have two choices. You can either discard to your selection or you can confirm your selection. Both buttons close your browser again and the one, the first one returns to your previous preset and that one takes the new one. If you're browsing, it's actually what you want to listen to, what, what you have selected. C node in different octaves are here. So, so pretty handy for previewing your sound. And if you found uh, the one you like, you can use the blue one and you got that one selected. The second new feature is that you can uh, have groups. So what you see here, here is one group. And you can uh, also, if you go to the track, 
navigation you can now also enter and leave groups so this script fully supports us groups these two buttons are for going to the previous or next track so what you see is that it skips the subtracks of this group so you can now use these uh, two buttons to enter or leave a group so if i press that one i enter the group and if i use the second one i leave the group also with that simple device you can fully control your groups in the play mode there's also now a new feature so if you go to the play mode you have the, the normal layout here but if you go to preferences and to the script here it is there's now a new feature that you can also select the layout so you see here we go up in fourth and for example if you choose third so what you can do in that mode is to play a chord you can just simply press three keys that's already so far for the improvements of the beat step two and now also the pro version is supported and let's have a look at that one so now we are looking at the beat step pro by Arturia which has a lot of features and is very powerful in its standalone mode but sadly the control mode is very limited so it's definitely not your first choice if you want to control your door nevertheless uh, put some features in it the script and the possibilities are exactly the same as the beat step without the pro version one big problem is that you cannot light the pads and even if you could they only have one color they only are white and i also don't know how to light these pads up there which would also be pretty handy so hopefully Arturia will tell us the answer to this big secret but currently there's no information about this you basically have to operate the device blind what i also couldn't do is you cannot facilitate the shift button so we have no shift button what i did is when you push the beat step normal the shift one you get you use those 16 pads for selecting the modes and also for other features for navigation features and for opening the browser and opening closing vst windows so what i did is use the 16 steps to do the same so the first eight are for navigation and for the browser and the window opening and the other eight are for selecting the modes so starting with the later ones so you selected the modes so the track mode the device mode the play track also this can be toggled between track and macro editing the drum mode, sequencer mode, and finally the session mode. The 15 has no feature and the 16th one opens the browser. As I said, the functionality is exactly the same, but you don't get a hint what's doing what. So this is the same as I showed before. You can preview the sound in the middle and this one is a discard one and this one is the accept button so you can accept it or discard it and the first eight ones so the first one is then the play button play and stop that one is record this one is toggle i forgot that to say it in a uh, in a beat step i showed before there's also the this one is then the 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 the, the toggle loop button and this one is click and then the other one this one is the click so what else do we have um, these are no features and number eight uh, opens and closes then the vst window so let's show that too let's set one hello yeah here it is so with the number eight you can open and close vst one the windows so you have to learn your script what does what but if you can manage that it has the same functionality as before something else to mention is that the normal one has only one input that's showing up that's different here with the with the pro version you have several inputs here starting with the bottom you have the drums so this is what you're playing back on the drum track this can be recorded if you use that track 
the other one are then for the sequences and this mode is if you have um, the controls enabled. You need to be careful what, what, what you're doing here. So if you have selected all ins, you might get some chaos if all those four are, re are sending data. For example, if you, if you press play and, and all of them get recorded. But what you could do is you could set up a template with three tracks and select these three tracks as the input. So you would be ready to record all the data from a project of your BeatStep Pro. See you. Bye.